3D rendering on an Ultrabook. Is it possible? The answer obviously is yes, as long as the computer in mind meets the minimum spec requirements of the program being used, sure, it can be done. And usually those spec requirements are bare bones, if you will. But an Ultrabook like this obviously isn't designed with 3D modeling in mind, so how well does it perform? To start off, let me remind you of this laptop specifications. This is the Dell XPS 13, which I reviewed right here. Check it out if you haven't already. It's sporting an i7 7700U Kaby Lake ultra low power processor and 16 gigabytes of DDR3L. It's also fitted with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD and the 3200 by 1800 QHD plus IXO display. I bought this laptop fully loaded and for good reason. I wanted to be able to edit videos on the fly without a hitch. Now this isn't the best laptop you could buy for video editing on the go. Obviously there, there are things that are uh, frankly much bigger that would do a much better job, but obviously those are heavy, they're bulky, they don't typically have excellent battery life. Uh, so an Ultrabook is a compromise I'm willing to make for the sake of portability, as well as having uh, nine to 10 hours of battery life for this thing, it's actually very good. And as for video editing, it gets the job done. I like to compare this Ultrabook to a desktop grade i3 PC. The very first PC I ever built featured an i3 4150, 8 gigs of DDR3, and a GTX 750Ti. We've come a long way since then in terms of desktops and laptops, but I was frankly able to edit and render comfortably on that i3, and that's about the same experience I have with this Dell XPS 13. Many of you have been asking why I got rid of my MacBook. I owned it for about four months before giving it to my sister for Christmas. She absolutely loves it. I'm glad I gave it to her. She's probably making better use of it than I ever would. I was just at that point getting into the whole OS X experience, you know, just getting used to using Macs in general. Uh, but then I found out that for my last semester here in college, I was gonna need a Windows-based laptop in order to run uh, many of the programs that I'll need for my senior design project. And among those is Petrel. It's a 3D modeling software. You can actually do way more than that on there, but for the purposes of this video, uh, it will allow you to create a 3D model of a chunk of Earth that you'll essentially be drilling into or just surveying. What you're looking at here is essentially my senior design project, or as much of it as I have at this point. It's in wireframe, divided into three layers, and littered with faults and cross sections. The first thing I want to point out is how much RAM the program is using. You can see we're around 5 to 6 gigabytes. It's recommended that any 3D modeling system have at least 16 gigs. 32 is ideal because it's probably more than you'll ever need. Uh, but I would say that 8 gigabytes in any Ultrabook would be cutting it pretty darn close. You probably couldn't run anything else in the background. I was able to do that no problem here thanks to that 16 gig buffer. It was also interesting to observe CPU utilization while this 3D map was being rendered. Usage never approached 100%, not even close frankly, even while we were manipulating the 3D object, which tells me that the software was trying to rely on a dedicated graphics processor, which this Ultrabook does not have. I should also mention that Petrel is designed with CUDA technology in mind, which is why Heisenberg ran the entire simulation without any hitches whatsoever. But of course, the more objects you throw into the 3D plane, the more taxing it will be on your system. Latency is definitely an issue at times, especially when new objects are to be rendered in the 3D window, but it's not something I would call unbearable. The cool thing is even when the professor is showing us how to do something in Petrel in class, I can just pull out my laptop and, and run through the steps alongside him. That's exactly what I was hoping for, that's why I sold the MacBook, and I'm glad that the XPS 13 can deliver. Now if you're wondering about how other 3D modeling programs behave on Ultrabooks like this, I would say that it depends largely on that program's optimization and how much RAM you have. I really mean this when I say it, 16 gigabytes is the bare bones minimum I recommend for any 3D modeling computer, especially an Ultrabook that isn't designed with that in mind. You might get by with 12 gigabytes of RAM, and it doesn't matter if it's DDR3L or DDR4, you won't notice much of a difference between the two, so don't really take that into consideration. Uh, but I would say 12 is, that's cutting it really close. Eight gigabytes just don't count on doing anything else in the background. Maybe Spotify or Pandora in the background. That's about it. I do hope at least this video helped clear up a few of your concerns about Ultrabooks and their processing potential. They are compromises, keep that in mind. You're buying a laptop with a smaller footprint at the expense of specifications. You could buy a 15.6 inch $800 laptop with better specifications than my Dell XPS 13. That's just a fact. Check this one out right here, or here, point made. If you ask me, ask yourself what you expect your laptop to be able to do well, and then go on from there. Don't go into this expecting a 12 inch Ultrabook to be able to play games at 60 FPS in 1440p. It's just not going to happen, the technology isn't there yet, we can't fit dedicated graphics chips and quad core HQ processors into form factors that small at this point, and even if we could, the heat output would be extreme. Needless to say, 
everything in life is some sort of compromise, and the XPS 13 was one I was willing to make. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you feel the complete opposite, click the subscribe button. If you haven't already, I'll catch you in the next video. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.